part of the Nice Chronicle content creation program. I always forget to say it. It's just like, uh, I'll throw it in the beginning, whatever. But it's crazy. One of the things I do like about Nice Chronicles, though, because I, sometimes I speak about negatives and I try to speak about the positives, is that the characters are busted. And I love that they're busted because every time you get a character, it feels like it's worth. Meanwhile, you, ha you play other games and sometimes you don't know if the character's good. And to me, that's like, that's insane. Like, when a character comes out, you want it to be busted. You want it to be great. You want it to be amazing. I know people call it power creep, and it pretty much is, but I, I kind of tend to like it. <laughs> What is going on guys? It is your boy Cash and it is time to review all of the fairy tale characters. I am no way shape or form doing five separate videos for these characters since they're dropping them all in one big package. We're going to go through all of them one at a time and we're going to go through in the order of starting with Wendy and ending with Urza since she is the Wendy is the character that they give you for free and then Urza is the character that is the admin uh Irisa, or whatever. She's the Avon Dungeon, so we'll leave her last, right? So let's get into it. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. All right, so we got Wendy, Sky Priestess. Right, right, Priestess? Yes, all right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who the hell you are. Wait, no video. Oh, am I that early? I'm that early. Hopefully they have like the little screen cap thing, right? Let me just scroll down. Okay, they do. So, ooh, the wind smack. The Wind Aura <laughs> and the Shattering Light Sky Drill in an arena. I know they have like arenas in the game too. Why are all their, I, I feel like all their attacks just seem slightly lackluster. Eh, okay, it's like a straight beam or whatever. Kind of like a wind beam, I guess, right? So she is, wait, what, how many zoomed am I? Oh yeah, we don't need to be that zoomed good. 175 to me is perfectly okay. All right, she is a attacker, if I think, if I'm not mistaken. Did she say, let me go back here. Oh, she's at the bottom. Where are you? No, she is a hybrid, okay. So hybrid, so her, um, you know, I wanna make sure I'm thinking about this correctly. So her skill is that restores all allies HP by 5% when win allies attack. So this is obviously really cool because if you have her attack, if you have a bunch of people, uh, win characters on multi-strike and counter-strike, you know, everyone will be healing like crazy. That's kind of cool. Actually, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Um, skill one, inflicts damage equal to 100% of the attack to one target. Inflicts 10% additional damage if the target's HP is 50% or higher. So, does more damage if they have more HP. Cool stuff. Uh, pretty good skill to have. And obviously, we'll skill up to whatever. Every uh, Knight's Chronicles... Ability skills are usually scaled the same way. S1 that does 100 will do a, I don't know what, what it is, but it's always the same. It's not like it's a, this will be like 5,000 or some crap like that. It's always the same. S2, which looks like it's some type of buff, grants focus power to all allies to increase damage dealt by single target attacks by 35% for one turn. Oh God, they are loving these single target attack stuff. I think the only buffing that they have for you know, AOEs is just uh, Britain, which is the, the dangerous omen. Caster gains strike preparation, free crits, to guarantee the next time I will critical strike for one turn. So she gives everyone an attack to single target attacks, and then her S3 is a single target attack. What a surprise. Um, <laughs> so she's gonna be doing good damage. She's setting up her own damage. She also is setting up damage of your Kali. Kali, all Kali stuff is single target. Um, Momo is in your squad, so she can do it. But you know, you, this is, you know, if you're going by the leader skill, we're trying to make a mono win team. So, you know, so, you know, let's just, let's live in the fantasy. No, we're not. Um, definitely running her with Momo, because I'm assuming that's probably gonna stack, and that sounds ridiculous damage. You actually might see your Wendy immediately joining, um, immediately joining your uh like your your moment like your arachnia teams and stuff like that just for the increased bullet damage Oof, that sounds insane s3 is in penetration damage which is always good either in no defense or penetration if it doesn't do either of those it's not not a good look it's I always try to ignore the event. inflict additional damage equal to 50 percent of the attack that ignores defense if the target fails to kill the target so if it doesn't kill, it will do additional damage. Can they additional damage kill? 
Who knows? That's a really weird uh, way to do that. So if it doesn't kill, it will do 50% of your attack to kill, meaning you could, I mean, you're gonna run her uh, heavy attack with focuses on crit damage because you're gonna S2 into S3. That's just pretty much how that works. But let's see if the passives change my mind. Obtains one highly concentrated F nano every time an ally receives a buff or HP recovery from the caster's skills. So now we know from, well, from the caster skills is very important um, because the passive, I mean, it's under listed under skills to leader skill. So I, it might work that way. Technically, that's really weird. Um, but HP recovery, the only way she does that is through her leader skill. So I'm assuming they do count the leader passive as skills. So, you know, that's something new. So she will get a highly concentrated ethanol um, every time a win character attacks. So... That's bananas. 100% um, chance to restore all allies HP by 10% when attacking. Oh, okay, so she also has that here. So she, wait, so if she's a leader, she's healing like double? Only when she attacks, she'll do that. You know, the other one is when it attack, uh, when people in general. Interesting. But um, what, what is highly, okay, <laughs> so what does this do? Increases damage dealt by 5% per highly contained ethanol. She can get 10 of them giving yourself a 50% boost. Uh, inflicts damage equal to 5% of the attack that ignores defense. Inflicts damage equal to 200% of the attack that ignores defense to the target and two adjacent if the caster has 10. Yo, Wendy's busted. Yo, <laughs> and they give you her for free? They give you two of them? Yo, Wendy's busted. Yo, I'm about to watch the anime and like look up YouTube just of her what why are these little girls so and this is funny because doc complains about this all the time uh showtime doctor he's like Yo, why are these little girls so powerful and these old people suck <laughs> this little chick is ridiculous is she like this in the anime holy god that is some she's healing like crazy she's buffing herself every time she heals she gives herself a 50 percent attack boost this thing does damage and if it doesn't kill does more damage like whoa ignoring defense out the ass whoa i'm happy with my wendy for free let me tell you Whew, that's just the first one one of them's gonna be whack i don't know which one one of them's gonna be absolute garbage it's just the way it was i think edward was the garbage one he, he just seemed drastically underwhelming in comparison to his peers but this is the complete 180 but i can't waste too much time but wendy is definitely a thumbs up for me next up is natsu the main character um according to my friend um this <laughs> He just gets stronger because he feels like it, you know, classic. What is it, Shonen bullcrap? So let's see. And of course, we're two here. The, the, the videos aren't even here yet, baby. We have no videos. So we're just going into it. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. I wonder if they did that on purpose. All right, increase the allies' damage though. Oh, you're just like uh, Roy, right? More damage. Increases allies' attack by if Lucy is in the party. We haven't got to Lucy yet, so. It's a double skill, so this is like Roy, but a little bit better. So you can like, if they if they synergize pretty well, then you know, why not, right? Fire Dragon's Iron Fist. Please damage to one person, see, one and a 50% chance to inflict damage. I hate stuff like this. And burn. Eh, I guess with the burn, it makes me not hate it as much. So that's pretty hefty on the S1 though, on the S1. Makes me automatically think counter multi-strike. Um, inflicts damage, S2. Flex damage equal to 120 to a target and adjacent is a cone attack, 70% chance to apply Blaze. Oh baby, him and Roy would be ridiculous already. And we all know what Blaze does. It's a tick, you know, once it gets hit, they'll take 200% of the attacker's attack when attacked. 100% chance to remove all buffs if the target is burned. Him and Roy's are BFFs right now. Ridiculous. I mean, he's a fire character, he's a fire attacker, so, you know, what else is new? And S3, he, I mean, so far he's pretty much Burn, 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 burn. And inflicts damage equal to 300% that ignores defense. Yo, ignore defense, ladies and gentlemen. It's it's just, the, it's the new wave. It's like buying the, you know, the new Jordan, the new brand new sneakers, the new outfit. You just gotta have ignore defense. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's some of their tanks are really strong. So it's like, 
you know, especially when you look at Alphonse. Alphonse is a beast, and like, I mean, it sucks that these guys are fire, you know, but, you know, Wendy's ignoring defense too, so, you know, she can counter those Murdochs that I still haven't seen yet, and how all the Alphonse is who I do see, right? Okay, so 65% to inflict revive unavailable, inflicts 30% additional damage, and the target is 50% or higher. So it's a, a proper nuke. <laughs> this is a proper a nuke. Uh, especially this is really good for PvE because obviously sometimes the characters are very tanky You can utilize this to do it and then also when you don't and they're below 50 it still does 300% ignore defense So yeah Passive 100% chance to burn two enemies for 30 30% uh, uh, at the start of the turn. Oh, so of the turn So when he goes when his turn comes up two people are getting burned instantaneously now, what is it? Uh, what was the one that if something was burnt, he did more? There it is, so S2. So he's gonna go S2 and he's removing all buffs from that target. That is an amazing passive right there. And increases all allies attack by 40% when attacking bro. <laughs> okay, they're ridiculous. This is too too strong. And this is actually what I like about Nice Chronicles. And um, this is what I like about Nice Chronicles a lot. And I also should say that I forgot to say it, but this is part of the Nice Chronicle. Now I'm so deep into the video. I'll probably edit it in in the beginning, but part of the Nice Chronicle content creation program. I always forget to say it. It's just like, uh, I'll throw it in in the beginning, whatever. But it's crazy. One of the things I do like about Nice Chronicles though, because I, sometimes I speak about negatives and I try to speak about the positives, is that the characters are busted. And I love that they're busted because every time you get a character, it feels like it's worth. Meanwhile, when you, ha when you play other games, and sometimes you don't know if the character is good and to me that's like that's insane like when a character comes out you want it to be busted you want it to be great you want it to be amazing i know people call it power creep and it pretty much is but i i kind of tend to like it because it's like once you have a bunch of crazy characters it's really hard to say that this is the only way this is the only way to do something because that's the these are the best characters there's no other way around it this is the only characters that you can get right but when you have characters, everyone's good, it's harder to make a meta. It's harder to make that this is the only way to do things. And that is what's actually good about when every character and everything is good in comparison to when only two things are good, only three things are good. This is the three way to do it. If you're not doing it that way, that's, you know, then you're doing it wrong. That's boring. <laughs> That's that's actually boring. So I love when I see stuff like this and these characters are strong. Like right now, I would have to say, oh, should I pick him or Roy? Or should I put them together? And then people are gonna be like, dang, everyone's picking this and Roy. I need to bring some water characters or I need to out, you know. I, of course, speed is always gonna be a thing, right? But you have way other ways of going about your day, <laughs> you know, and building up more characters. I feel like that's the reason why I still play it because there's so many characters that I can build and the counter or everything else. and. You know, and it's not hard to build the characters at all. So they just don't have that much content. <laughs> just the only thing. Let's go to the the other passive. Activates resolve for one turn upon taking fade damage. Reset skill uh, skill threes cooldown and receives debuff immunity for one turn when resolve is activated once per battle. Increases the damage dealt to burned enemies. <laughs> Yo, he he's actually going to be doing a, a lot of damage. Uh, this is the S one. Come on, reset. <laughs> ah, flame on and punch, okay. The S2. Uh, fire Hadouken, it looks like. And the S3, Crimson Lotus Exploding Dragon Flame Blade. I added dragon there for no reason. So wait, he flames on. You see the little animation, he goes straight in there, boom, and that's a big explosion. Beautiful, looks clean. Definitely a lot better. Well, so far Wendy's was good too. I had to like really look at Wendy's. It would have been better if I had like the actual full video, but you know, beggars can't be choosing when you're this early, right? We're really early right now. So next, next. All right, so, so far, damn, Wendy's healing crazy. This guy has a lot of damage. He has a lot of upfront damage. Um, the ability to remove buffs is crazy. Ah. Uh, I'm a little boy in a candy shop right now. You see these smiles? These smiles, all right. Next character, Lucy, which it will boost up if she's with them, right? And that's if they're using the leader skill. Now, I've seen her before, but I'd never known she was actually good. She is a light attacker, if I'm not mistaken. So let's look. All right, increases 
light and fire critical strike damage by 25 percent increases all uh, allies attack oh wow that's really good if not in the party right that's still pretty good 20 percent for free aoe plus giving herself and fire not uh critical strike damage is pretty good too the lucy kick inflicts damage to the standard stuff there we go increases uh inflicts 50 percent additional if the caster has gate key i'm pretty sure we'll figure out what that is later inflicts damage equal to 120 uh cone attack 100 chance to decrease the target's turn speed if the caster has gate key uh and this is a course to disable it makes them pretty much lose their turn if they're about to go urano materia inflicts damage a 300 <laughs> oh god i mean like i said either ignores defense or has to have penetration only sr and below have like oh it just does 300 damage which is trash uh, when you get to the higher leagues it needs to penetrate they'll go through shields and damage immunity or it needs to ignore defense to just have a higher damage scaling it just has to inflicts additional damage equal to 60 percent of attack that ignores defense if the caster has gate key so <laughs> and here we go let's go into the gate key at the start of the battle 50 percent chance to gain a shield equal to 40 percent of the max hp for two turns if the, if attacked while gate key is active doesn't say that that, that that will you will keep getting the shield and this is why penetration is important just said that um 40 of the max hp is good because she's an attacker so she needs you know she needs a high hp scaling skill shield because she's not gonna have much hp you know like 20 percent. sometimes you'll be like oh it's only 20 percent of the max hp when the, meanwhile the character has like so much hp it's, it's hard to take down a 20 percent shield before an attacker 40 percent sounds about right but she's gonna get that every time well 50 percent chance to gain a shield when she's attacked with the gate key she only has it at the start of the battle which hopefully we can find a different way to get it caster consumes gate key to activate resolve for one turn upon taking fame that only happens once okay so they have a little way of getting rid of the gate key right so increases critical strike chance by 30 percent when the caster has gate key so she has 30 percent chance at the beginning of battle crit chance in the beginning of battle grants the caster concentrated power to increase skill three's damage by 100 percent for one turn and strike preparation jesus uh when when the as that when Geeky is consumed. Okay, so when her resolve is activated, she can S3, which is a 300% ignore defense nuke, but it will not do this bonus one because the Geeky will be consumed, which is only when she resolves. Uh, and But that resolve, this this hit after she resolves, is going to be an automatic crit, which is why she has the leader skill here. She does seem good. Um, Obviously, definitely going to the third slot. I think that she's not as good as Wendy, or, and uh, she's not as good as Wendy or Natsu. So let's look at the animations. The Lucy Kick. Come on, come on. Oh, that's hot garbage. All right, um, Aquarius. Oh, and that's a cone attack. I can see. So she's like, she summons things. Uranium Materia. Okay, all the magic. Oh, look, the, the, the freaking panty shot, of course. Jesus. You guys are pervs. Look, panties. My virgin eyes. So, she seems okay. Um, Definitely not one I would immediately build up. She's kind of like the, 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 what was it, the poison guy? Y Yang? Ling Chua, whatever the hell his name is. Which is, I know he's the, the greed. <laughs> he's the greed guy, but they didn't give you the greed version of him. But yeah, it's fine. You know, she's okay. Great food buster, which seems he doesn't care about Lucy, doesn't care about Natsu. This guy has to be solo man broken. Let's see what he does. Maybe he should have a battle with Kane. Why? All right. Um. Oh, because they're shirtless guys with tattoos. He's like, look at my. Oh, whatever. All right. So let's see. Increases allies' damage dealt to enemies with abnormal statuses. Screw Kane. Brit this guy with freaking Cynthia, which is definitely concerning. <laughs> Oh, penetration, penetration, penetration. Okay, baby, we got the penetration man. Penetration man. Which is good because you just, we just, you know, Roy is in there now. Now we know about Natsu. So it's good to have, hopefully this guy's gonna live up to being a really good counter to them. So we got inflicts penetration damage, inflicts additional damage equal to 50% uh, to the target. If they are frozen. Okay, so now you wanna bring it with Bell. 
but he doesn't freeze here. Maybe he freezes with his passive, most likely. Inflicts penetration damage in a cone. Inflicts additional damage if they are frozen. Okay, gotcha. Freeze and freeze. Okay. All right, and that's why a normal status, because frozen is a normal status. Gotcha. S3 inflicts another cone, but a higher attack percentage. Inflicts additional damage if they are frozen. This guy is basic. But let's see if there's a reason for 80% chance to freeze one target when attacking. Increased damage dealt to targets if they are frozen. 100% chance to gain a shield equal to 30% of the max HP for one turn when an enemy freezes. So every time he freezes, he gets a shield. Oh, every not even when he freezes, when an enemy is frozen. So if you actually mix him with Bell, he will just gain shields for no reason. 90% <laughs> chance to activate damage immunity for one turn if the caster freezes an enemy. Oh, interesting. So, oh yeah, I remember he's like, he is the defensive guy. Is he a hybrid? Go back up here. He is a attack type. Very defensive stuff for an attack typer. Attack typer. Um, so yeah, he has, if he freezes, he gets damage immunity for a turn. Um, if anyone freezes, then he gets a shield, but he can also freeze himself. Gets a shield, damage immunity. He's pretty keeping himself safe for the most part, um, but very lackluster as far as like all the other people that have all these intricate stuff and he's very simple you know which is nothing wrong with being simple you don't have to be complicated to be good so Hadouken and ice ice geyser oh you can't really see the geyser they should have shown the geyser let's see one-sided chaotic dance Ooh, okay I don't see the purpose of doing this first unless that's like part of the ritual. And then I guess the swords are all in the, okay, okay, I gotcha. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, um, so he seems, um, he actually seems strong because he can freeze and being able to freeze at ease, 80% chance to disable a target is actually strong as fuck. I mean, like it's kind of like, it seems basic, but he has an 80% chance every time he multi-strikes or attacks or counter-attacks um, and he has two cone attacks. So, and that's 80% chance to freeze. And if they're frozen, those cone attacks do more damage. And if this S1 will also do more damage. Um, and actually his S1 will do a cone attack, which will then freeze them. <laughs> so he actually, and this is without leader skill, right? So he has this as a leader skill to do more damage to normal status enemies, which is the frozen. So I don't think you'd actually need to run that. But the fact is that he has cone on cone on cone. You're gonna S3 or S2 a lot, and then S1, and then those will cone, and then those will freeze. 80% chance each time to freeze. That is stupidly strong. Stupidly strong, especially if you have, again, multi-strike. I actually would run him on like a multi-strike kind of thing, because uh, he, I feel like he'll get more turns, like speed, multi-strike kind of thing. Um, counter is okay, but I want him to be more offensive. Um, cause he gets shields and stuff like that. So if he gets attacked and then he gets a shield kind of seems weird. I want him to attack first, get a shield or damage immunity, right? And then he should be safe when they do get a turn on him, you know? So, oh yeah, he's actually really, let's see where, like, let's shake the meta up even worse, right? Now, if you need work, come anytime in fairy tale. So now she is her own character, obviously, but you, as we know, the character somewhat usually leans to something that we can look for in the actual dungeon. Uh, leader skill is the worst that I've seen so far. Thir actually, no, well, most boring. 30% I think is the highest maybe for our AOE attack. I don't know that and I'm not checking. All right, so inflicts damage equal to one target. 50% chance to bleed. Oh, don't make her about bleeding. That's literally Lust. Lust was the bleeding chick. Uh, the, you know, I don't know, that's kind of weird. I don't actually know if bleeding and like, you know, cutting up stuff like that is part of her actual kit. That just seems weird that Lust was, you know, about bleeding, making cuts, and then this chick is gonna be the same, which kind of makes it seem like, why would you even bother? But let's see, S2 is going to be, obviously a, a S2 that hits all enemies, usually has low attack scaling for smart reasons. 50% chance, but this is different because the last person I see that has that is um, Cynthia. But it's hard, no, you wouldn't scale that, but to see that you'll actually have one that you can scale up will be vicious. So, and it's 50% chance to cause bleeding, 50% chance to reduce recovery amount. Clear hard clothing. What? Uh, inflicts damage equal to 300% that ignores defense. Is this the first ignore defense that you can, the uh, Avent, Avent ignore defense that you can scale up? That's new. 50% chance to dis uh, disable resolve for two turns. 
that's good. Increases all attacks. Um, for one turn, if the attack kills a target, which it has a high chance of doing that, specifically because you will be able to level this. So these two, her S1 is boring as all types of hell, but the S2 and the S3 are definitely going to be maxed out 100%, right? The Knight passive inflicts 40% damage when attacking enemies with debuffs, which you can actually run the whole squad. <laughs> I think she's the only one that doesn't put debuffs. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, she puts buffs on the on on the team. Debuffer, debuffer, right? Don't you debuff? Kinda. You said okay, so you don't really debuff. So just these two, right? So they they'll be running together. And uh, isn't that how the show goes? I'm pretty sure. All right, grants the caster one of the following at the start of the turn. So at the start of her turn, she gets a free penetration, strike penetration, or veal for two turns. Interesting. So at the start of the turn, she's getting penetration, strike penetration, or veal of phantasm for two turns, which is really good. So that means you can technically not lose your veal of phantasm and then get a strike preparation. Obviously, the best one that you probably would want is strike preparation, but it's random, which kind of sucks. Because <laughs> if it wasn't random, then you can actually just run crit damage and then have you know oof, that would be insane. But penetration is not that bad either. If they're shielding, you know, obviously, because you know we all know that gray is now going to be crazy shield, and shielding and, and damage immunity is a big thing. So, and so, as we see right here, and activates damage immunity for two turns at the start of the wave, decreases caster's cooldown, skill cooldowns by two turns when an ally dies, increases damage dealt by allies by fifty percent in the arena per each. What? <laughs> what? I'm actually, not that it's, I feel like it's strong. I mean, how much is it? 15% increases damage dealt by allies by 15% in arena per each following hero. Natsu, Gray, Wendy, Lucy, at least one hero mentioned must be in the party. So if you go into with the full squad, Natsu, Gray, Wendy, Lucy, and they are all strong respectively. What is that, a 60% attack boost? And that's just her passive, so you don't actually need to run this if you don't want to. It's just really weird to give a character a passive that works in, you know, an arena. I've never seen that. We've never seen that. There's no, like, in Avan dungeons, this character cannot be stunned or debuffed, which would give the sign me up. But, you know, that's very strange. I've never seen that. But uh, we'll, we'll we'll use it. I mean, <laughs> that's so strange. That's very strange. But hey, you know, whatever floats the boat, right? So this is the Blumman Blot, which is a straight sword slice, the Circle Sword, which is you know the AOE hit. Still no swords at all of them. That's funny. And a clear heart clothing. Oh yeah, that's the outfit I usually see her with. And it goes, she goes, cuts through them. I don't know how that or what that how that works. And I know that Fairy Tale, like, just to be fair, uh, if you guys don't know, Fairy Tale is definitely like has tournaments and stuff like that. That's why all their uh, alts and stuff like that are in a coliseum. I know that has something to do with tournaments and things of that nature. Not 100% sure how accurate that is, but you know, it makes sense that she focuses on arena because she's a she's supposed to be really good at arena. She wins the tournaments or something like that. Of course, someone's in the comments is gonna blow me up, but you know that is kind of cool. Uh, but where does she rank? Because you know, as obviously bringing her in and bringing in at least one of the two, like I would definitely bring her, uh, Natsu and Gray. You know, Wendy. I mean, you're definitely gonna have Wendy, right? You're not you're not guaranteed Natsu. You're not guaranteed Gray. So, her and Wendy, you know, together is cool, you know? And she's giving attack bonuses and stuff like that. And that's a 15% boost um, that, that everyone in the arena gets. Everyone gets that, regardless. Like, the rest of the characters don't even have to be fairy tale based. But the fact that those characters are there, they're all going to be doing more damage. So, that's really insane. Plus the hero talent boost, right? So. I don't know where you guys lie in the fence. I still think Natsu's number one. I think Gray's number two, number three, number four, and I still put her last. She's really good though, but um, actually, I think I might put her last. What is it? Ignore defense. Yeah. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I think she's last.
No, well, you know, because you can skill her up easier. So, uh, what's it called? Is last. She's gonna be number four because you can actually skill up to S two, skill up to S three, skill up to S one. Right? You can have her six 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 easy. So that actually makes her dramatically better um, than I'm giving her credit for. So that's it for me. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you guys in the next video. Woo!